What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Lexus IS350 F Sport, courtesy of Bobby Ray Hall Lexus in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because this thing is still known to this day for having stellar reliability. You can easily check Auto Trader for any IS and you'll see that they're being sold with cars having over 200,000 miles. So that's incredible, especially for a luxury car. And this is still one of the best steering feels I can already tell you right off the bat that I have experienced lately. And honestly, in my last 700 plus drives. But anyways, ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so there's essentially two different configurations for the 2023 IS350 F Sport. Rear wheel drive starting at $44,980, which is a very modest $635 price bump from the 2022 model year. That's really not that bad. A lot of reviews I've been doing, I've been seeing 1,000 plus pretty much on average. So that's not that bad. But anyways, then you got the all wheel drive version being the one that we have today starting at $46,910. But regardless of which configuration that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated reliable V6 putting out 311 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 280 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,800 RPM, power center rear wheels or all wheels through a six-speed automatic for the all-wheel drive with paddle shifters or an eight-speed automatic for the rear wheel drive. So a little bit of differentiation there, so I wouldn't emphasize that. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.6 seconds. That's plenty respectable. Top speed, 143 miles per hour. That's honestly a heck of a lot more than I expected for this. With MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city, 28 on the highway for the rear wheel drive, 19 city, then 26 on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test or paddle shifter test here in our IS, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's a circular dial and buttons located just to the right of the shifter. Those drive modes will include Eco, Normal, Sport, Sport Plus, Custom, and Snow. There's actually a snow button for our all-wheel drive here. So that is that is nice. But anyways, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, steering sensitivity, all-wheel drive system engagement, and the suspension settings as well. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first. And by the way, there is a full manual shift mode. You just simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to put it in that sport driving mode. And let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, we're in full manual shift mode here. We are in first gear. Hey, it's holding too. That's nice. All right, three, two, one. Let's do it from a standstill. Three, two, one. Yeah, whoa. Oh my gosh, that's nice. Paddle shifters are quick, man. They are quick, surprisingly. And that's weird because it's paired up with a six speed automatic. Typically, you gotta find quick paddle shifters when it's paired up with a dual clutch or something like that. But honestly, with the six speed automatic and our all wheel drive version here, the paddle shifters are still quick. What's even better, I'm just gonna touch on this right now. There's an ASC button by the driver's side left knee that actually pumps some of that engine sound into the cabin, which made that acceleration sound even cooler. So yeah, I was a big fan of that as well. I actually played around with that right before we did that acceleration. So. Big fan of the ASC, but anyways, paddle shifters are quick. I like that. Let's now give back full control to the IS here. Just slide the shifter back to the right and coming up on our straightaway here in three, two, one, go. It throws your head in the back of the seat. Holy cow. And that sound, you guys can hear it. This thing is plenty quick. Holy cow, this thing is quick. This thing is fun and it sounds dang good, but yeah, I like that. I remember back in the day, honestly, when I was looking at ISs, it was really back in the day, but there was an optional HKS catback exhaust system from the factory. So you could actually add it on when you were building your IS. And I thought that, I thought that was so stinking cool. So I like that they, they're having that engine sound pumped into the cabin. Uh, it would be cool if they still had that HKS exhaust option, but 
I don't think they do anymore. But anyways, that was plenty of an acceleration for the IS without a doubt. But to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.1 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.7 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as the 60 zero stopping distance goes, it comes in at an incredibly impressive 110 feet. Usually the one teens is sports and damn good, 110. That's really dang good. So anyways, let's touch on the braking here. It's great. I love that braking feel. Definitely on the firmer side of things, instantly brings you to a stop. And honestly, the number really speaks for itself. 110 feet is probably the best I've tested in like a year or so. So that's a brilliant braking feel. But anyways, the touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get an F-Sport tuned independent double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, S-Sport tuned independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. Then if you were to go with the rear wheel drive configuration, you're gonna get a Torsen limited slip differential, which essentially sends torque to the rear wheel with the most traction. So that's not only going to assist with actual acceleration, but also with handling as well. I would say right off the bat here, the steering feel is incredible, especially with the drive mode. So if I put it back to uh, normal drive mode here, it does loosen up. The steering feel is still very much so on the heavier side of things, but if I put it in that sport driving mode, holy cow, that is without a doubt the most noticeable difference to the steering feel I think I've experienced in a couple hundred cars at least. That is a massive difference. So you put it in that sport driving mode, the steering feel is so much weighted on the heavier side of things compared to the normal driving mode. I can't know, let me actually put it in eco. Yeah, it's even looser. I don't like the eco steering feel, but yeah, the sport, the sport driving mode steering feel is incredible, you guys. I would definitely recommend that one. But anyways, then touching on ride quality, it's been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today. Love the ride quality here in this thing, but touching on the cabin noise, really, it's been perfectly fine. We're gonna hit some railroad tracks here real quick. Yeah, it's been perfectly fine. Honestly, the only thing as far as cabin noise goes is when you really get on it with that AFC turned up, turned up, you can turn it down, of course, but with it turned up, that engine noise is just blaring into the cabin, which is so stinking cool in my opinion. But again, if you wanted more of that luxury cabin, you can, of course, just turn it down and you won't have that. So, wanted to mention that. Then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. And typically with the sedan of this shape, you're not gonna have any issues there either. Did wanna also mention the rain sensing wind windshield wipers do come standard on the IS350 F Sport as well. So essentially what that means is whenever the IS detects any kind of missed rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on this windshield wipers for you. It's kind of like automatic headlights, but automatic windshield wipers. Just one last thing you got to worry about there. So big fan of that as well. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Lexus IS350 F Sport. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Lexus IS350 F Sport, finished in ultra white, in case you were curious of the exterior color name that we had on this one here today. Let's go ahead and start, as always, with where this one is actually made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the letter J, indicating that the IS350 F Sport is built and assembled in Japan. Yes, this is JDM. I absolutely love it. But let's go ahead and start up front here. By LED headlights do come standard on the IS350 F Sport with LED daytime running lights, of course, as well. And the automatic feature. So when it starts to get dark in the night, they will turn on automatically for you there, but also automatic high beams. So when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams. So nice little convenience feature there. I did want to also mention though premium triple beam headlights are available for an additional $1,250 if you wanted to go that route. Love that Lexus spindle front grille. This is one of the best looking front ends of any vehicle out there right now, my personal opinion. This just looks so dang good. To the bottom corners there, you got the front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. And again, one of the reasons I kind of wanted to test drive and check out the F Sport today is because the F Sport is specific in design uh, compared speaking to the other ISs out there so I like the S Sport design leg where it definitely looks so much more aggressive with the gloss black accents up front as well so 
Big fan of the front end of this one, but that pretty much rounds out the front. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of the IS350 here, chrome window surrounds do come standard. Body color, power adjustable side mirrors also coming standard, but they will also be heated with LED integrated turn signals as well. And of course, since we have the F Sport, we do have that F Sport badging found on the front fenders, differentiating itself from the uh, non F Sport IS, as I guess you could say. S Sport specific side skirts as well. So that's going to be another another differentiating factor there. Taking a look down at the wheel setup then 19 inch split five spoke alloys are going to come standard, but then 19 inch split seven spoke forged BBS alloys are going to be available. So do want to mention that they're essentially lightweight racing wheels, but overall, Good looking side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, there's a carbon fiber rear spoiler with the F Sport handling, of course, that looks dang good. LED tail lights, that's a very good look as well, going across the entire back end there. So added illumination at night. I like the gloss black rear diffuser down below as well. Also LED license plate lighting. I don't want to overlook that. That looks pretty cool as well as it starts to snow here in Mechanicsburg. I feel like it's always been snowing when I've been reviewing these cars lately. <laughs> Anyways, dual exhaust outlets with kind of satin chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around to the back of the IS, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob, there is a button on the trunk itself, of course, and kind of a button by the driver's side left shin, if you will. But anyways, what's opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 10.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is also a first aid kit back there, as Lexus often pretty much always does on all of their vehicles. There are some tie down anchors, surprisingly. You typically don't find those in sedans. There's actually some grocery bag hooks to the upper corners as well. You typically don't find that in sedans either. Of course, there's some cargo lighting. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire, which I personally prefer as well. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that's gonna come in at 32.2 inches. So on paper, not a ton, but for reference, I was able to fit. I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Rear ventilation does come standard. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard. There is an available power rear sunshade that goes for $250. It's uh, available as a standalone option in case you were curious there, but no uh, charging ports I was surprised to find. So I wouldn't have minded if they added them, but then making our way up to the front seats, 10 weight power adjustable driver seat with power lumbar coming standard, eight weight power adjustable passenger seat as well. That's pretty cool. Heated and ventilated front seats, leather seating of course, and my very favorite F Sport bucket seats, some of the most comfortable seats in existence. So love the seating on this thing. And there are memory settings available as an option if you wanted to go that route, another standalone option there. But overall, again, seat comfort was absolutely incredible. With the powered lumbar, you absolutely sink into these F Sport specific seats and the side bolsters hug you in place around the turn. So huge fan of the seating in the IS. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and tilt telescoping like the F Sport logo at the very bottom as well. That's pretty cool. There is some uh, Ashwood accents available if you wanted to go that route and it is heated actually as well. I've had the heated steering wheel on this entire drive so that is definitely pretty nice there. Then take a look at the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Lexus logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock unlock and that button to pop the rear trunk there. So pretty basic key but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the infotainment screen. And so now here's one of my favorite parts about the IS is you got Lexus LFA inspired gauges. And so there's actually a little button 
on the right hand side of the steering wheel that kind of allows you to slide that gauge cluster to the middle or to the right and so you can adjust different information you want to be able to be viewed up there as well but i love these f sport style gauges they're typically found on the f sport handling trim levels of i think most all lexuses at this point but they look so freaking amazing so huge fan of that but anyways then make our way to overall interior quality like the power moonroof that we got in this thing dual zoom climate control coming standard you got aluminum foot pedals coming standard like the old school analog clock as well found just below the uh infotainment screen it actually looks pretty good up there so don't mind that there's ashwood trim available though we don't have it with us here today i like the contrast stitching found just above the passenger side glove box leather shift knob leather shift boot you got your cup holders just to the right of everything and within the center armrest a couple usb charging ports and the 12 volt power outlet as well so Overall, it's not as elaborate as some of the other Lexuses that I've seen and reviewed, but it'll certainly get the job done. So I personally don't mind it. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. So an eight inch color touchscreen display is going to come standard, but there are some package options that allow you to get a 10.3 inch high resolution color touchscreen display. And so, like I said, you can either control it via the touch screen, that is one way, but there's also this touchpad controller and buttons located just behind the shifter as well. So either way is perfect fine bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay you can check out your weather information up there there's some driving statistics factory navigation system as well as you guys are currently looking at right now but of course your radio information to go along with that and so 10 speakers is going to come standard but there is an optional 17 speaker mark levinson sound system and it's not actually all that expensive for you know adding on sound systems a lot of times it'll be like three grand but for the mark levinson it's 1080 bucks that's really not all that bad and that comes with 1800 watts so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one Dang, that bass was like unreal. Like it, clarity was pretty darn good. Of course, it's gonna have 17 speakers, but the bass was unreal in that sound system. So I don't know, that was a pretty darn good. I always like Mark Levinson. You're definitely not gonna be disappointed. I would say it's definitely in my top three sound systems for sure. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the IS in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But to the right there, you're also looking at a surround view monitor giving you that bird's eye view was completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. It's new to start IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest rating given by IIHS so that pretty much says it all right there front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors to heathers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane tracing assist lane departure alert with steering assist road sign assist dynamic radar cruise control automatic high beams as i said earlier and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert as well and so there is a couple optional packages too i wanted to mention the panoramic view monitor i guess for 1365 dollars and then there's intuitive parking assist with automatic braking for 565 dollars so when it comes to my final thoughts this is one of the best if not the best looking sedan in its class without a doubt specifically the front end is just perfect so absolutely love the look on this thing perfect steering feel as well when you put it in the sport driving mode at least it has such a heavy feel to it so love that as well mark levinson sound system is great and one of the best selling points about the is especially when you're looking for a sports sedan nothing is going to beat the reliability of this thing in its class that is what lexus and toyota of course are known for and the fact that you can get a sports sedan with the reliability of the is quite honestly, is unheard of these days when everything is being turbocharged. So big fan of that. You got an IIHS top safety pick plus, most comfortable seats ever. As far as room for improvement goes, the rear charging ports would have loved to have seen that because my kids are gonna want to charge up their tablets and multicolor ambient lighting, I think would really uh, allow an extra layer of customization in this thing because this did used to be a tuner car, believe it or not. My, my little brother actually had an IS300 heavily modified back in the day 
And multicolor ambient lighting is a thing that is continued on these days as well, so I would love to see that. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the IS350F Sport in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel, after all. I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.